Hi everyone, this is Ryan from rpnt.ca and today we're going to be talking about the drug salmeterol, also known as Cerevent. Salmeterol belongs to the selective beta-2 adrenergic agonist drug classification. Adrenergic agonist means that salmeterol is stimulating the sympathetic nervous system. Adrenergic represents the sympathetic nervous system and agonist represents a stimulating response when binding to a receptor. Salmeterol stimulates the sympathetic nervous system by binding to the same receptor sites as epinephrine and norepinephrine, which are the main neurotransmitters in this nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is also known as the fight or flight nervous system and is responsible for actions like bronchodilation, increased heart rate, increased blood pressure, and decreased rest and digest functions. Specifically, salmeterol is a selective beta-2 agonist, meaning it stimulates beta-2 receptors, which mainly cause bronchodilation. Salmeterol is a long-acting bronchodilator, used for the management and treatment of asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD. Salmeterol should not be used for the relief of acute asthma attacks, as its onset of action is relatively slow at approximately 30 to 50 minutes. Due to the slow onset and longer duration, salmeterol can be classified as a maintenance or controller inhaler. A rescue inhaler, such as salbutamol, also known as albuterol or ventolin, should be administered for acute asthma attacks. However, salmeterol can be administered 30 minutes prior to exercise to prevent exercise-induced bronchospasms. Some common side effects of salmeterol are fine tremors, headache, anxiety or nervousness, and dry mouth. Less common side effects include tachycardia, arrhythmias, hyper or hypotension, and bronchospasms. Most of these side effects are more common with overuse of salmeterol, more so than with regular use. Avoid salmeterol use in clients with severe cardiac disease, tachydysrhythmias, or hypersensitivity to sympathetic nervous system agonists. Use salmeterol cautiously in clients with hypertension, diabetes, glaucoma, and seizure disorders. Always remember to assess and monitor for side effects of salmeterol. Watch for changes in heart rate, like tachycardia and arrhythmias. To decrease dry mouth and changes in taste, it's important to teach clients about rinsing their mouth after use. Salmeterol is administered as a dry powder discus inhaler. I've placed a link in the video description with more info about how to prepare and properly use discus inhalers. If your client is going home with salmeterol, always ensure that they understand how to properly administer their inhaler by getting them to perform a return demonstration. And ensure your client understands the importance of following ordered dosages, reporting to their healthcare provider if symptoms do not improve after use, and not over-medicating on salmeterol. If overdose does occur, a beta-2 adrenergic antagonist can be used as an antidote. Salmeterol is most often administered in a combination inhaler known as Advair. Advair is the combination of two medications, the first being a bronchodilator, which is salmeterol, and the second being a corticosteroid, which is fluticasone, also known as Flovent. And that's about it for the basics of salmeterol. If you would like to try a free nervous system drug quiz, I've placed a link in the video description for that. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or visit rpnt.ca for more help.